What's up, guys? Happy New Year. What do we know about Assassin's Creed Codename Hex? Well, Assassin's Creed Codename Hex, also referred to as Assassin's Creed Neo, is the working title for the upcoming game in the Assassin's Creed series. This game is said to be one of the darkest series entries yet, set during the Witch Trials in the Holy Roman Empire, currently in development at Ubisoft Montreal. And apparently, there will be strong feminine energy. We'll circle back to that one later. And what don't we know about Assassin's Creed Hex? We don't know who the characters are, and we don't know what part of the Holy Roman Empire we're visiting, or how exactly the Witch Trials will go down in-game. But until we get more news, let's go wild. Let's talk theories, speculations, wishes, and more. So, there's two very interesting real historical figures I'd love to see portrayed in Assassin's Creed Hex. Number one, Peter Stump, the werewolf of Bedburg. Peter Stump was a German farmer accused of being a vile, incestuous, cannibalistic, witchcrafting werewolf. And the story goes, in Cologne, Germany, 1589, Peter Stump was tried under allegations of being a werewolf, committing several murders, cannibalism, and other heinous acts over the span of 25 years. To avoid torture, he spoke out, confessing all of his crimes. For one, he claims he has been practicing black magic since the age of 12. He claimed that one day the devil had given him a magical belt or girdle, which enabled him to morph into the likeness of a greedy, devouring wolf, strong and mighty, with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled like fire, and a mouth great and wide, with the most sharp and cruel teeth, a huge body and mighty paws. And when he removed the belt, aka the girdle, he said it made him transform back to his human form. After his capture, he told the local magistrate that he had left this girdle in quote-unquote, a certain valley. The magistrate sent for it to be retrieved, but no such belt was ever found. For 25 years, Peter Stump had allegedly been an insatiable bloodsucker who ate the flesh of goats, lambs, sheep, as well as women and children. He confessed to killing and eating 14 children and two pregnant women, including the babies from the pregnant woman. One of the 14 children was his own son, whose brain he reportedly devoured. And Stump loved his son dearly, but in the end, his bloodlust prevailed. And not only was Stump accused of being a serial murderer and a cannibal, but also of having an incestuous relationship with his daughter, who was sentenced to die with him. In addition to this, he confessed to having had intercourse with a succubus sent to him by the devil. Naturally, after confessing, Peter was publicly sentenced to execution by beheading, a merciful death, considering everything that he's done. Many people have many interpretations of the werewolf of Bedburg. Some say he may not have been a real werewolf at all. Depending on how you view his story, he could have been one of two things a man scapegoated to appease and coddle the fear of a broken society, or he could have actually been a deranged serial killer with cannibalistic, incestuous tendencies. Now, in Assassin's Creed lore, any object capable of transforming, distorting, or destroying a human can easily be tied to Isu influence. I wonder if there's a Belt of Eden, or a better name, Girdle of Eden, that could have corrupted him, morphed him, and made him this way. Who really gave him this belt? Who gave him the succubus? How did it all go wrong? I've gotta say, if Ubisoft really wants to make Assassin's Creed Hex dark, this man right here would be one hell of a character to build a story around. To even feature him in the story would be a great move to make, because I'm on the edge of my seat just thinking about it. Number two, Sorcerer Jackal. In the Salzburg Witch Trials, Austria, 1677, 20-year-old Jackal, accused sorcerer or magician, was allegedly found dead. He was the leader of a blood brotherhood, of poor beggar children, teenagers, and young adults from the slums. All of them were taught black magic by Jackal, and because they followed Jackal, 139 children, teenagers, and young adults were arrested, tortured, and executed. He was claimed to be able to make himself invisible and to be able to enchant mice and rats, 
which ruined the harvest of the farmers. Other rumors mentioned Jackal turning himself into a wolf, or being able to turn blocks of wood into mice. He was portrayed as a murderer, and the rumors eventually made him so cruel that the witch hunters themselves preferred to avoid even trying to capture him. He was the most famous wizard in the city's history. Jackal became the comforter for the despairing, the poor, the wrongly accused. To my surprise, he was never captured, just randomly found dead. And when I first read this, it seemed meant to be. And knowing Assassin's Creed, their explanation of this would most likely be Isu influence. Jackal could have been a sage who came across a piece of Eden that grants the abilities of enchantment as well as invisibility. Someone like Jackal could easily make for an interesting Assassin's Creed character, especially if he's playable. Now both of these figures may never make it into the game, but if they do, the chances of them being playable protagonists, deuteragonists, antagonists may be slim, as there's an interesting exchange under a job position posting for Hex. A commenter mentioned, My hype for this game cannot be overstated. I hope it has some strong feminine energy. To which a Ubisoft Montreal recruiter for Hex replied, In many ways, it does. Hard eyes emoji. Which may mean that we'll be getting a solo female-led Assassin's Creed. And with that, I'm absolutely excited to see a darker, grittier take on my favorite video game franchise of all time. And I'd love nothing more to discuss theories, speculations, and wish lists with you all down in those comments. Happy New Year, and until next time, peace.